Hey, what's up? Serena here from thriftdiving.com. Guess what we're doing today? We are making over this vintage drafting table. Don't worry, I'm not painting this. It is gonna be stripped, sanded. This thing is going to look beautiful. And today we are gonna be walking through step-by-step -step how to do it. Now, I only bought it for $30 several years ago and over time the kids just destroyed it. You see their names carved in it. Apparently I didn't teach them how to respect people's property because they totally disrespected this table. But today we are making this table over and I'm gonna walk you through step by step how to do it. Some parts of this you can actually do indoors. This project is being sponsored by Franmar, so we're gonna be using their Blue Bear Soy Gel Paint and Urethane Stripper. I love this stuff, I've been using it for years, but we're also gonna use their Emerge Cleaner and Degreaser. But you'll also need some water-based stains, which I love, they're eco-friendly. You'll need a box, a putty knife for scraping that stuff off, safety glasses, an old bowl, a paintbrush or a foam brush, either is fine, and also protect your floors. So some plastic sheathing, and sandpaper, you probably are gonna need an orbital sander too. Don't forget the dusk mask and lots of gloves and lots of lint-free towels. Oh, and we're gonna be using some clear wax. You can find all the materials list down below. So the first thing that you wanna do is to put some plastic down. Remember, this is something that we're gonna do indoors. So if you put plastic down on your floors, you'll prevent a huge mess. And let me tell you, stripping, is a messy job, but it doesn't mean you have to do it outside if you're using products such as Blue Bear that you can use indoors, but you do not wanna get this stuff everywhere. So even though we're gonna be stripping this, I always like to, as a good rule of thumb, is to tell you always clean your furniture because there's times when you might be painting, you gotta clean it. Even if you're stripping, yeah, you're gonna strip away the dirt, but it's probably best to clean it. Look how dirty that is. I can't even remember the last time I cleaned this table. <laughs> It's got my kids' dirty handprints all over it. So after we've cleaned everything down, the next thing is to apply the stripping gel. You can apply it with just a paintbrush or maybe a foam brush. The main thing is you wanna make sure that it doesn't get dried out. So if you're doing a large piece of furniture, it's okay to work in sections. So for this piece, I wasn't going to apply the stripping gel to the entire piece. I was just working on the top and once the top was done, then I would do the rest of the body. Now the thickness of the soy gel that I'm using here is I want it to be thick, but I don't want it to be too thick. I'm gonna put enough on so that it can do its job, but I'm not gonna overload it because then that's just wasting product. So you should start to see the old finish or the old paint, whatever it is that you're stripping, you should start to see that bubble up almost immediately. And I'll leave it on here for probably about 15 minutes and then start scraping. You'll notice here that I'm using a metal putty knife. This isn't really a problem for my project because my table's already scratched. Not saying that a metal one will scratch your wood, but just be very careful because those sharp corners could scratch your wood and then maybe you'll have scratches that weren't there before you started. So if you want to, you can always use a plastic putty knife and that will work just as well. Another tip is that you may wanna have a couple of boxes to use because this can get pretty messy. And when you're ready to throw it away, I felt comfortable putting it in the trash because this is soy gel, it's not toxic. If it were toxic, you'd probably have to take it to your local county recycling center. But thankfully, it's non-toxic, so we can move on to the next step, which is cleaning your project. When you're done, you're probably gonna have a little bit of that soy gel left on your project, on your wood, so you can use the Emerge Cleaner and Degreaser, which is a TSP replacement, and it's safe for your home and the environment. We're gonna be sanding, so we want this wood, this surface, to be completely clean before we start that sanding. You also wanna make sure that your wood is dry, so I actually waited till the next morning to start sanding. I'm using an orbital sander here with probably about 80 grit sandpaper, and I've got a hose and a vacuum, so there wasn't dust created and it wasn't messing up my environment. But for you, if you don't have this, you may need to sand by hand or you can put up some barriers, some plastic barriers so that the dust, wear a dust mask of course, doesn't get all over your house. I started getting frustrated here because this sander was not getting the scratches out. It was gonna take a lot more effort and Somehow my sander kept tripping the electricity. So I knew I was gonna have to do that part, the sanding, in the garage. But in the meantime, I could dismantle this and then keep doing some of the stripping down below in the basement and just save all the sanding 
for the garage. And when you're working indoors, you want to have a large space to spread everything out. I'm using a hobby table, but if you don't have a hobby table, look for some really inexpensive sawhorses and you can get a piece of plywood or maybe even one of those rigid pieces of foam to use as a table. And it breaks down pretty easily and doesn't take up a lot of space. So you'll see here that I'm using some of the stripping gel, the soy gel, on the other parts of the drafting table. I didn't realize they were in such bad condition, but it looked pretty disgusting, actually. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad this was until I started stripping it, and I'm like, wow. Okay, but once that was done, I put a little bit of the gel on the metal parts, and I thought that it was going to really take off the entire finish, which I think I was kind of going for that, but when I started wiping it away, I realized it actually was doing a pretty good job of cleaning them up. So that's all I did was just clean them up with the soy gel. So the next part, whenever you're stripping wood, is you want to sand it. Most times you're going to be sanding because you'll see that there is a discoloration in the wood. My wood had a ton of scratches, so I needed more than just getting rid of the discoloration. I actually needed to smooth this out. So it took a lot of effort for me to do this. I started with a very aggressive 40 grit sandpaper, moved up to an 80 grit, then a 120, and then a, no, I think I put a 150 after the 120, and then 220. So it was a lot of work. But get an orbital sander for this. It makes it really easy. This is a higher end one, but you can definitely use a Ryobi or a DeWalt. Those brands work perfectly fine. Once it's smooth and it's ready, it's time for preconditioner. I don't always use preconditioner, but I've been using it because of my closet. That's the closet that I just built. You can find that link down below where I talk about wood conditioner, but it creates a smooth surface on your wood so that any stain that you put on there will be nice and even and smooth. So put that on, wipe it off after a minute, and then let it dry for 30 minutes. So while that was drying, I went ahead and finished off the sanding for the other parts. And I'll admit, I got a little lazy here. I didn't feel like taking the rest of the base apart. But it ended up being okay. I mean, it still sanded well. I just didn't want to have to figure out how to put that thing back together. <laughs> so moving on to the next step, it was time to apply the water-based stain. I love using eco-friendly products because I don't have to worry about my health. So this is something that just cleans up well. And again, it's another eco-friendly product that I just absolutely love. You can find the links down below. The thing I didn't love about this is the color. It was a little too orangey for me, a little bit too much red. So I did two coats in this color and then decided the third coat was going to be like a chestnut color. Again, same eco-friendly, water-based, no VOCs. And I liked the way this looked. It looked pretty good. It had a, a warmer color and I didn't want to deviate too far from the original, but I feel like layering it with two coats of the spice pecan and then one coat of the darker chestnut was like the perfect color. It was, it was exquisite. I loved it. Anyway, you see here that I'm putting on one coat of the spice pecan and it's pretty easy to apply. I'm just going from side to side really and coating the entire surface and then wiping it off. And you see how light it got. Once I wiped it off, you see how light I got. Here I'm doing the second coat. It's getting a little bit darker, but it's not until I put that third coat on of the chestnut that it really started to get darker and had a little bit more depth to it, I think. I love the way it looked. So the next thing, the next step was to take a little bit of wax, put it into a soft cloth, something that doesn't have lint, you know, go lint free, and just create a little ball in your hand. You don't want to apply the wax directly to the wood. You always want to apply it with a cloth. And after a couple of minutes, the wax should be ready to buff. Now, if this is a high traffic piece, you're going to want to do probably three or more coats. But if the piece is not getting that much traffic, which means it's not getting a lot of use, you could probably do like two coats and it'll be fine. The more coats you add, the shinier it will get. So here's what it looks like when you first put it on. It gets really, really matte. But when you use a soft cloth, and you start buffing this out, and you need a lot of arm strength there too, you see the shine start to come alive, right? This is the part I love about using wax. And it feels so smooth. I just love it. So here I actually did three coats on the top. I only did two coats on the body, but I did three coats on the top. 
and look at that shine. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> You're gonna wanna do this probably about every six months to maintain the top. Now for the body again, I only did two coats. That was not really as important to get the extra shine, but it's shining and I love the way it looked and it looks much cleaner if you remember from what it looked like when we started. And the last part of this project was to put everything together. Here's a tip for you. If you're doing a project that has a lot of pieces like this, take a lot of pictures and video clips so that you can remind yourself how it goes back together. Even though I had pictures and videos, I still struggled a little bit. <laughs> but you know, hey, that just always happens whenever you're looking for screws and you can't figure out where things go. But you'll notice here on the bottom, that I actually refinished that as well. And I did that in the darker chestnut. I'm glad that I did the layering effect because I think the chestnut was a little too dark on its own. I like the lighter color with just a little bit of chestnut over it. So let's take a look at what it looked like again. Remember, this is what it looked like when we started, a $30 thrift store table. I mean, this is kind of a valuable table. I looked it up on eBay years ago and I think it was worth like three or $400. But remember, I only paid $30 for it, so that's a pretty good deal. And as much sanding as I did, I could not get all the scratches out, but that's okay because I want it to half character, but still be beautiful, and I think I actually met that objective. Remember, this was sponsored by Franmar. We used the Blue Bear Soy Gel Paint and Urethane Stripper, but we also used some other friendly products for the environment and we didn't have to compromise our budget, the environment, or style. You can strip furniture in your home, in your garage, and be safe doing it and have an amazing project. So be sure to go check them out at franmar.com. Tell them Thrift Diving sent you. Come back again if you're new. Subscribe because we're always doing amazing things here at Thrift Diving. And I will see you next project.